And so I'm a sucker for, uh, for wanting to see people succeed. I want people to win. Yeah. And so I have to be careful myself of not throwing myself into some of these programs that like, yeah, you have a, you have a bit of a vision and I want, you want to win, but you're not really willing to, and you start to see the signals of like why they're not winning. Yeah. And you're like, you're not going to change that. And if you're not going to change that, then I'm not going to be able to really do what I need to do. Fair. And so sometimes I have to be careful with those startup programs because there's more enthusiasm than substance. Whoa! Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picked another pieces. Good morning and welcome back to another episode of the Lambo and Leroy Show. We thank you guys for tuning in, for subscribing, all that good stuff. Um, today, I got a really, really special guest. Um, well, we have a very, very special guest. Man, I've known my boy Dan McGranahan for a very long time. And uh, he's actually really influenced me to get into this podcast slash show game because uh, we've worked together a lot over the years. So, Dan, thank you so much for coming on, man. Well, Lambo, <laughs> I'm pumped to be here, man. I'm pumped to be with Leroy. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked. So I look forward to chopping it up. I've been listening to you guys since the very beginning when you came out. I was yes. like, oh, they're doing it. They got my support 100%. I'm in. And uh, I've been enjoying watching you guys. And yeah, I've, what do you think so far? G- uh, critique us. Yeah. Oh, man. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Give it all. No, we, we want it. Yeah, we want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, look, I've, I've been down this path a lot. I've produced and and, and hosted a lot of shows over my lifetime. And, and so one of the things that's consistent is, is the evolution of, of these things. And so what, one thing I've seen out of you guys is better, 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 better. And one of the unique things I've seen even, uh, as of recently, which is, I think probably going to be a, a good marker for what this show becomes in the long run is that you've really expanded the walls of, of what you're going to talk about. Yeah. A lot of people with a show like your guys with natural influence and racing and off-road, uh, that tends to become your, like, sort of the boundaries of where you guys go and conversation and, and guest. Uh, but what I've seen lately is you guys have been like, you know what? No, smash those walls. We're willing to talk about anything because yeah. life is so many things. <laughs> yeah. And while we have these strong influences in our life, these other elements are so big to us and so important of to our listeners and to and who knows what we might discover if we do a little gold searching also and so yeah i see you guys like searching gold by by having all these different conversations and you obviously have relationships i listened to one uh with you guys had and, and the guy was like a uh, um it, he was an entertaining guy he sounded like a great guy is a uh um he had his own podcast about like uh escrow companies or, or, so, or HOAs oh, or something yeah, like that. Mike, Mike, yeah. 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 And, uh, um, but, and, and I think that just use that example it, to your point of like, you guys open the door instead of putting up the boundary. And I think that that to me is the biggest thing I've seen that says, okay, this, this is going to be really Rad. cool. And who knows where this becomes. I think we were worried about that too. We were worried about like going outside of our niche a little bit. And it's been awesome, man. People it's weird. Cause like, dude, Mike's Mike's podcast is our number two right now out of yeah. every one. So it's really cool. Like, and that's his was so different. Yeah. So I think it's cool. I think people really do enjoy that a little well, bit. Well, and we, you know, we're trying to educate, you know, our subscribers and listeners also, but equally at the same time, we're being educated as oh well at the gosh, same time as everyone right. else. Dude, right. it's such and a cool it's learning curve. So awesome to just hear new stories because like our like our industry and stuff, it's all about networking, right? And we, we tell our kids, you know, networking. Um, you, you really, like, if I could go back to my old Rolodex days and still have all those numbers today, like, there's still so much to learn moving forward from every person. And the conversations are are exciting. Like, we like we yeah. have these conversations all the time off camera, like, when we're at a networking <laughs> event or at right. the bar or at a race or yeah. something, like... And it's fun to like bring it in here and let people like kind of listen in on some of those conversations because there's so much value from everything. I mean, I've learned from networking through mentors and stuff and it's awesome. Like, I mean, you could equally be a mentor to us as everyone else. And it's, it's amazing. I totally agree. And I think one of the things that comes through is that you guys are learning too. So, and when you guys are learning and I'm this, I try to approach absolutely the same way because I'm a sponge. I'm always trying to learn. I've already learned since being here. 
uh, <laughs> Bryant taught me about his latest storage system and uh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and it was really great for me. We had a really great conversation. And so, but what it does, I think it disarms the audience and, and allows them to just join in and participate and they don't have to carry any sense of like, Oh, I have to, this isn't for me or something like that yeah. because, because everybody is on that whole track of like absorbing. And when you create that absorption sort of mentality or presenting it, yeah. everybody can appreciate it and everybody yes. can participate. And it goes by so fast when you're learning something like that, you're just absorbing it and the yeah. time flies. It does. It's funny. Like I go back and I listen to every podcast, like when I'm driving, like dude, I edit it or, or walk or edits it. And I'm here for the podcast, but I'll go back and listen to everyone and I'll learn more. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't remember yeah. him saying that because we were so in the zone, you know? Yeah. Or just like so much happened all the way through that hour or two hours or whatever it was. And I go back and listen. I'm like, wow, that was actually really cool. Yeah. It's well, we, awesome. We used to call it the cave. And, and I feel like I'm kind of excited because I'm back in the cave. And it's when you put these headphones on. Yes. And they cancel so much else out and you zero in on the, the people you're engaging with. And I hear you so much better right now than I do when we even normally talk. And so you, it just drives this very dynamic, like dialogue. Yes. Uh -huh. You I know agree. what I mean? I love it. I love the cave. It escaped, by the way. You escape. The cave makes I, me happy. No, I, I, that's the best way to talk about it is the cave. Cause you do escape from the world. Yeah. And you're in the zone. It's it reminds so cool. me of like racing when you put the helmet on. Totally. Yeah. And oh, you're totally. Only, you only hear the one person on the mic or your spotter and you're really just left there with your thoughts and you're, you're like hyper focused on just your surroundings and oh everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, it really just kind of allows you to, like you said, kind of you're escaping reality for that second mm. and getting into that cave. It's awesome. It's crazy, man. That's the best way to explain that. I never even thought about like explaining it that way, but that sums it up perfectly. I love the cave. <laughs> the cave. We're, here. We're doing some cave diving today. There's awesome stuff that happens in the cave. The cave is the spot. Uh, well, so, today's the man cave, so let's go. So you mentioned like you you produced shows and yeah. done all that. Like you know, who are we talking to? Who yeah, is Dan? Give us a background. Who's Dan? Man. Well, uh, um, this may take a while, guys. Dan's got to. We got all day. <laughs> I know. Back. Let's go. Uh, I'm gonna skip over a lot, but. But, uh, okay, started out as, as a youngster growing up on a little beach community between Santa Barbara and Malibu uh, in the town of Oxnard. The beach is called Silver Strand Beach. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, incredible beach, incredible surfing spot. So I grew up as a surfer, hardcore surfer, competitive surfer, wanted to be a pro surfer. Awesome. That was my world. In addition to uh, is a very, it's the most local, like the most localized spot in Southern California or it may be in the world. Like yeah. it's, it's a heavily localized spot. And what, like, that what do you mean by what that, that yeah. means? <laughs> yeah. For the people that don't live in, in the coastal sort of communities like that is a localized spot or a place that would get that kind of reputation would be because, uh, they would protect their spot. So if you lived in Rancho Cucamonga yeah. and you were like, dude, let's go have an awesome beach day with the family. Uh -oh. My cousin lives down in Oxnard. We'll visit my cousin. And then we'll go to the beach down there at Silverstrand. And you went to the beach at Silverstrand. You would be met with I don't want to call it gang mentality, but you would be met with this very abrasive physical altercation type of environment. Kind right. of like Locals you know, surfing the pier at Huntington exactly or yeah. San Onofre. There's some certain spots where people were. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I get only, it. Only times like 50. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's that and gnarly. Huntington's actually one of the examples of like, they have this very beautiful location uh, and there's only one way in, one way out. And they're very sensitive to keeping, keeping it that way for themselves. I'm not... Uh, defending the behavior anymore. That's far, that's, that's long since past, but I grew up in that environment. Uh, um, but you were one of them strong army the people out of there. I was a <laughs> hardcore local with a lot of strong arm being and a lot of fighting and a lot of what comes from, from that's that. That's crazy. I would, ne I would never yeah. picture that coming from Dan. Well, you know, awesome. when you I was know, younger, I mean, you always kind of ha knew that was happening out there and you were kind of timid to go where the crowds work. So you didn't want to like get on the wrong person's wave or yeah. something like that. And then, True. or if I was on a body board, I mean, they're like looking like you idiot, get the hell out I of know. here. It's <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's bad. I, I understand a little bit of both sides, but it doesn't justify it. But, but, uh, um, but yeah. So anyway, so I grew up in that environment. Uh, um, and then from there, uh, uh, I kind of, I moved up to Santa Cruz, uh, was living up there for a little while, uh, just basically surfing a lot. Uh, from there I actually bailed. I went to Hawaii where I went to a Bible school, Rad. which was really awesome for me. Uh, it was very hard. It was a very hard experience for me. It was, it was a lot of transition in my life yeah. at that point. How old are you at this point? Basically 20. Oh, okay. okay. Let me see. You're yeah. still a, 
a kid. A kid that is just wound to like get super gnarly. (laughs) But all that has done is get me in a lot of trouble, right? Uh Because it just has. Uh, Anyway, so I go there. (laughs) Uh, I'm in Hawaii. I'm loving it. Uh, in that I'm surfing and I'm learning and I'm dealing with some of all the winding that was going on in my life. And, uh, um, okay. So then I come back from Hawaii. I'm going to skip over, like I said, a lot of stuff that's, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> stories unto yeah. itself, right? Uh, um, uh, come back from Hawaii. I did have one interesting, inc- well, we're not even going to go there. That's bad news. <laughs> it's it's bad news. news. Uh, you almost have to now say you almost have to go. <laughs> How long were you in Hawaii for? I was in Hawaii for a year. Um, I was at the pla- uh, this place called the Pipe House. I'm going to go ahead and tell the story yes. as bad as it is. Uh, um, I was at this place called the Pipe House, and uh, um, which is a famous house there in Hawaii. Right now, it's I think now it's the Volcom House, but oh, it's, on, yeah, the Shore? Okay. it's on the North Shore. It's right in front of Pipeline at the time. It was called the Pipe House. Rad. Uh, Jerry Lopez's original house, I believe, is whose house it was. Uh, um, and I'm watching this surf contest called the HIC Pipe Pro. And there's this, there's a ton of super heavy locals in Hawaii, right? And I'm identifying myself as kind of this super heavy local from, from, uh, California, but I'm over there and I'm, I'm, but I have this self mentality of myself. So I have trouble escaping some of those behaviors at the time. (laughs) Yeah. So anyway, so, uh, so I, I'm at the pipe house again, I'm a competitive surfer. I know a lot of the top guys I can surf with a lot of the top guys. So, uh, I'm at the pipe house. I'm watching some surf stuff. I go to leave and I have someone with me. And that person with me like stops and doesn't follow me. And there's this, uh, um, there's this uh, group um, (laughs) there's well, right next to the pipe house is that like this channel that basically allows people to get to the, and it's full. There's like a thousand people or something. I mean, it's a big, it's a big old ordeal down there. And I leave the pipe house and I swing the door open because my guy's right behind me. And, uh, um, and, but he had disappeared. He wasn't behind me. He got stopped to talk to somebody. So I look like this total howly clown that slaps the door open. <laughs> and then one of the heaviest locals of that time was this guy named Johnny Boy Gomes, right? Uh, um, and surfer people will know who I'm talking about. It's a very buff, you know, Hawaiian dude, like, like Hawaiian. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I mean, Hawaiian people are, they're pretty large. They're like, pretty gnarly. They're gnarly, yeah. they are gnarly for sure. Yeah. And he just starts like lighting me up and I'm kind of caught off guard by the whole thing. Cause like, I, what's didn't, happening? I didn't understand what was going on at the yeah. time, but, but in front of all these people and, uh, but, uh, I saw it as an opportunity because at the time, all I wanted to do was like an opportunity get like in. that to me was like, Oh sweet. I can I'm going to knock this guy out and put him in my list of, of people that I've knocked out. And then it's just going to bump, just <laughs> oh, going to add to my list. My list, so yeah. my list was my stature is getting taller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Oh, sweet opportunity. <laughs> So, uh, um, yeah. So anyways, uh, that happened while I'm in Bible school and trying to kind oh of my turn gosh, my life mellow, around yeah. and, and get, get my head on straight. Uh, um, so anyway, so we had this big confrontation in front of everybody and it squashed. It didn't end up going anywhere, which I'm, I'm grateful for, but, but it was an interesting deal. At the yeah. time you're kind of upset. You're like, damn it. I wanted to <laughs> believe me. There was like, and, 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 uh, uh, you know, I think my life was bouncing off of going two different directions at that point. Yeah. And, and that one might've been the, the off ramp that I really didn't need. Okay. Uh, um, That's and I'm awesome. grateful that it didn't well, happen. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, uh, okay. So I co- come back from Hawaii. I had met a girl, uh, she's from Sweden and, uh, um, and we were going to get married. So come back from Hawaii. And, uh, I also hook up with some new friends when I get back to, to my hometown and they're launching a skate park. Cool. So awesome. it becomes the biggest skate park. It's the biggest skate park launch at the time. It's an indoor skate park, 35,000 square feet. Wow. wow. It's gorgeous. Uh, um, and it's called skate street. Which was huge back then because skate parks were, they were still kind of shunned on. It was hard. Like HB, I think had one of the only like public ones that you could go to. Totally. Yeah. And as a kid, like you, you were trying to skate everywhere. I was a skater when I was younger and you would go everywhere, but you're always getting chased off by owners yeah. or police or, and it was hard to get community support for a skate park. Yeah. And so I was in Oxnard. Well, and this was a private support <clears throat> skate park indoor. Rad. Uh, it was like the Vans like parks Vans, that you yeah. know of, but uh-huh. the Vans parks are actually modeled after this park because Rad, those okay. parks didn't exist at the time. Yeah. Uh, um, a lot of like what you see at Woodward is modeled after this park wow. initially. So now they kind of started it. It started a lot. And so skateboarding, like a lot of things, is cyc- cyclical and it, it had its ups and downs. And this was coming of out of a real down for downturn for skating. 
launched this huge skate park. It's the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen. Uh, um, vert ramps and and uh, uh, street course and Rad. mini ramps and just just everything. And then also muraled all the walls, corner to corner to corner in this like Damn. live environment. It's wow. really incredible. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was a, one of the biggest video games at the time. Yeah. And this park was a, a featured game in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Oh, right. That's <laughs> awesome. It was a big deal. Uh, um, anyways, we launched that and I was getting married. So I, I put on like a, this, I was like, I got to do something to start making some different money. My friends had launched a skate park. I'm like, I'm going to put on a surf contest. So I put on a surf contest and that was kind of like the, one of the first things that I like was like, okay, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to apply yeah. some creativity to it and yeah. have fun with it and leverage some of my relationships and leverage all this investment I put into this sport. Cause like to put a, to put a surf contest on, first off, you probably have to get approval from other sanctioning boards and stuff. Right. And then with the city, and I, didn't every, do, I didn't do any of that. Just like, Here Hey guys, just, no, just like a friendly competition. This is what I flex the dude, 20 year local. I do what I want card, uh, <laughs> nice. so, uh, but I probably should have done all that. Yeah. No, I ran it super good. I just real style. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I just did though. It. Yeah. Uh, um, I might've, I don't, yeah. I and that's what you're 22 ish. No, I'm mean, like, yeah, 21 at 21, this point. Okay. Like, uh, um, anyway, so so I put on this surf contest, uh, um, leverage the skate park. We do like the the award ceremony at the skate park. I host the surf contest. Rad. And uh, it was one of the first sort of things like that that I hosted, which was which I found that I really really love doing. And and event when I look back at the the skill set, I was like, okay, that that clearly for me was like, okay, this is something you enjoy. It's something you have a knack for. You need to refine it, but you have, you have wow. some traction there. Cool. So anyway, so I put on this surf contest, I make it fun. Uh, we do this collab deal where we have all these pros and then we have all these amateurs and we combine them like on a draw and make this team deal. Dude, that's awesome. Super fun, super unique. Nothing like that had ever been done. Yeah. Always had this interest of like, how do we make these things more engaging for the participants? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, anyway, so contest went well, I was able to raise a bunch of money for my wedding, which was the goal. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That's all you yeah. need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Some like hardcore contest people were like, Oh, I like grilling me over like the results. And I'm like, at the end I was like, like trying to kind of grind me on like, Hey, this was, this math was wrong or that math was wrong. I just remember this. And I was like, I could care less. I was like, yeah. everybody had money. fun. Yeah. I made money for my wedding and I really don't <laughs> <Yeah>. care. <laughs> you That's don't the reality. Yeah. Sorry, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. 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 Yep. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> so anyways, from there, uh, I got with my friends that had started that skate park. And I said, I want to start a skate park, an offsite version of your skate park. So I'm going to build a mobile half pipe, mobile quarter pipe, mobile you know, street course, and I'm going to start doing events. And, uh, um, so I did that. And oh, so wow. I started my version of skate street, which wow. was my company, which was skate street events. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so, so you start rad. taking up places and yeah. So I basically, the skate park was rocking. I yeah. had, it had a ton of attention and it had the interest of people. Like people would be like, Hey, can you come do this here? Can you come do this? And they were like, no. And I was like, yes. Yeah, we can do that. No problem. That's funny. I remember that back in the day when they had like vans, van skate shop. They would have, you know, they'd bring out a bunch of like a mini ramp and like they'd bring open all the ramps and open yeah, house. Yeah. yeah. And, and we started doing similar to that open houses, small events, regional events. Uh, then we'd get a couple calls from like production companies like, hey, let you know, we, we need a skate park for this. Can you do awesome. something? We need a quarter pipe for this Levi's shoot. And then it went from there and we started doing, you know, major major events, like major production companies, major venues, major festivals, wow. you know, uh, um, major, you know, TV shows, major commercials. We're working for Disney, we're working for McDonald's. Is this all know. pre X games too? This is all basically at, as X games is, is Ramping kind of up. finding its groove. Yeah. Yeah. And then we transitioned, uh, um, to freestyle motocross. And because I always rode dirt bikes growing up also, my dad raced dirt bikes. And uh, um, so it was just something that was authentic part of that California lifestyle. And I've heard you guys actually re reference this also, like the, the growing up in California, it's really like 
uh, you're just you're engaging the elements, right? So it's mm-hmm. either dirt or it's snow or it's water, yeah, uh, or it's some concrete or whatever. But you're like you're doing the California thing yeah. on, on those elements, or it's sand. I know you guys spend spend uh-huh. quite a bit yep. of time in Glamis, and uh, um, but so for me it was the same thing, right? It was it, it was water was pretty pretty heavy portion of it at that stage, and then uh, a fair amount of 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 desert and track yeah. and things like that. Well, and it's yeah. kind of cool because like those elements they may not always be the source of like your income or you might be you may not be always be able to make money right. doing that but they certainly are a motivational tool to help you drive for and make money oh, yeah. in other ways like if you enjoy yeah. it, i want to enjoy that so i'm going to work hard and do this in these other areas like it's such a motivational like i mean point for all of us because like like my wife and i we were supposed we went to glamis last week and i was very you know super busy She's like look sean why why are we even going? I'm like, you know what? I go, if I stay home, I'm going to work. And if I can't go out there right now and enjoy my time, then why am I going to work? I go, we have to, I yeah. have to go out yes. there. Yeah. I go, yeah. otherwise yeah. I'm going to want to work next yes. week. I'm going to get burnt out. I need to do this. This is, I work so we can go do this. Yes. Okay. yes. This is the point of working so hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that that self-reflection is really important part of understanding how to keep yourself from burning out. Yeah. You know, uh, you're like in a, what seems like a family business, yep. right? And, uh, the, the importance of maintaining, you know, like when you just work for somebody else, it's like, you know what? I I need to go somewhere else. You don't, you don't, you can, Yeah. you know, I worked in a family business and had, had to walk away, but, but, but you probably don't want to, it's not your desire. And so what you need to do is you need to manage yourself Uh and not let it become the monster that ate you. Yeah, because exactly. You everybody's out, relying on yep. you to, to be that guy. And, and it's, it's, it's way more complicated than people realize. Oh yeah. Uh, um, and so I think that, I think that self-reflection is pretty wise yeah. and awesome of your wife to be all about it. Too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally get it, which is amazing. Well, she didn't go to the, you know, the last couple of times at Glamour, so she was kind of hungry to go. She's like, I want to go. Like, I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to speed forward a little bit, but uh, I do want to say on Glamis, since you brought it up, for some reason, I never made my, my way out there forever till just last year. I went there for the first uh, Red Bull Sand Scramble. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, brought my side-by-side out there and had a blast. I had so much fun. I was like, gosh, man, I need to be coming out here more often. I need to find people to come out here because I want to get out there and drive. But I have a little bit of issue I got to take up with Glamis. Yeah. Was it a witch's eye? (laughs) No, 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 no. It's none of the obstacles. I'm down with all that. Uh, um, I was with these guys and and we would go and we'd take off and be like, okay, let's jam. And then we jam for like 20 minutes and then we get to, uh, what's the one hill? um, Oldsmobile Oldsmobile or or something. Yeah, we get to Oldsmobile. And they park and everybody's like parked and everybody's just like, okay, crack the cooler. We're going to hang out and drink for two hours. And I'm like, I want to drive for two hours. Let's go drive for two hours yeah. and then go chill for 20 minutes. Yeah. Like <laughs> drive the, for two hours. a little bit of the, the, uh, it, for me, it's a little reverse. Like yeah. I just would way rather drive way more than what, and maybe it was just the unique group I was with, but it sure looked like it was, that was the program. That's kind of the thing. I think it's kind of the program out there for, for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, it has like that Havasu feel. I was going to say that. That's what you say. Havasu. Yeah. 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 Drive the boat. So you, yeah, yeah. Go yeah, to the yeah. and park. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. kind of go, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that going on. I mean, on the busy weekends, it's hard to go ride that much. There's so many people out there. Yeah, the dunes sure. are chopped up. It's not as enjoyable, but like this weekend coming up, it's been blowing. It's been wild right. all week. It'll like the smooth, dunes huh? are going to be epic. And so all you want to do is just go ride why they're epic and just smooth. So yeah, both and, ways. And, you have some okay. weekends that you're driving a lot, some weekends that you're chilling a lot. And even with Tabitha, though, too, like some weekends I'll blow through four tanks of gas. Yeah. Some weekends I'll blow through one, not even one, because you drive to one spot and you chill for the weekend. Well, yeah, it's so like know? busy weekends, like there's everyone out there. It's yeah. more of that networking fun, hang out, shoot yeah. the shit type of thing. And but then off, off weekends, weekends, you like, you know, and have a so you're, you're doing, that's when you're doing all the tubing, that's yes. when you're doing all the stuff, yeah. you're running around, doing all the, the water sports, same yes. with out there, too. So the Red Bull weekend, I mean, there's like an attraction that weekend. So everybody wants to watch right. it. So you're going to sit there all day and watch stuff. And all it's going to, I mean, that's why it's always been hard to like watch sports or even, I mean, I'll watch motorsports and stuff, but all it makes me want to do is go ride and yeah. go drive. Like you're sitting there, like watching these guys doing the Red Bull stuff. And all I want to do is do that. Right. Like, well, I can't sit here and watch this anymore. Like, let's go. Let's go like, drive. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. It, and part of it probably was that it was so new to me. I also was just like, I was so enamored with what was happening. True. I was really enjoying learning the, the transition mm -hmm. and slide and frame sliding a little bit, yeah. uh, which was an, awesome. kind, of, kind of a new experience, but super fun for me. Uh, um, and I'm sure for everybody, but, but it was new for me. So it's a different level of fun when it's really new. Right. Oh yeah. And you're like coming out of these deals and you're transitioning and you're kind of get this Fall little enough. like frame slide it's deal. The best. <laughs> so rad. Right. Yeah. And so I was just wanting to spend a lot of time doing that. You <laughs> yeah. know? Uh, um, it's the unknown too. Like you're going up and you, you really hope it's going <laughs> to transition well. Where when you start getting comfortable and you throw the car into it and then yeah, let yeah. it fall down yeah. like, or you cut the transition and jump down into it. Yeah. Like there, that's, what's so awesome about the dunes is you can never go on the same ride, you know, twice, right? Like you can try, but you're never get the same line, same everything. And then they change every weekend. It's right. always new and exciting. Like there's always something different. Like it's my, so rad. I it's love my that. favorite. Yeah, so, so, so you got into dirt biking. That's your okay. Next. Okay. So we started doing uh, freestyle motocross shows. Yep. Uh, incorporated with our skate and BMX, and it, again we were doing. At the time, the company was rocking, and we were doing uh, shows and festivals all over the place, and it was a blast. And a lot of activation, also. So uh, any sort of brand or you know different types of activation. We had vert ramps. We you know uh, radio stations would call us. You know anytime they had something like we just awesome. had a whole thing going on. Uh, um, then freestyle motocross showed up. And at that same time, freestyle motocross had just sort of really like taken a hold of the X games and become we're the dominant voice of the X games yeah, right now because was. there was a season where that was definitely the case. And, uh, um, and it worked for me because I had a really, you know, low risk, you know, I wasn't worried about the risk. Yeah. Uh, um, I was comfortable with it. High risk tolerance, I guess. Uh, um, and so I was, and it, and it made sense for me because I rode, I understood all of yeah. it. Uh, um, and so I started putting on shows really early in the season where people putting on shows, got a metal ramps and, and everything Rad. necessary to put on the shows and, and also did some things, uh, early on that, uh, most people don't even really know about, but initially we were using these metal ramps, metal landers, metal takeoffs. And, uh, a few people had these airbags that went on the front of the landing. Yeah. Yep but they were super expensive, like, you know, seven grand to buy one wow. and nobody was doing it because they couldn't afford it at the time. Yeah. And so I went and engineered airbags and starting then, which was like, you know, 15 years ago now wow. or more, uh, um, sold those airbags to anybody that was doing it at my cost. So it oh, was just right. for safety no profit, purposes, just yeah. because I wanted people to have these Dude, airbags. And so, so like to look back now, like it's so sketchy, not having those so Dude, sketchy Rams because you're, you're basically, <laughs> you're landing in a full on metal cheese grater. It's yeah. like instant death. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, super sketch. So I was like, I was like, okay, I participate in this sport. I, I know how to fix, I'm going to solve this problem for myself, but I'm going to solve it for everybody else also. Awesome. And, uh, um, and so that became, that actually became a whole nother business ultimately. But, uh, but, you know, seeing a problem, solving it, solving it for the right reasons, you know, and, mm -hmm. and bringing something to the table for, yep. for the, for what everybody around you is doing. Uh, um, and so what, like I said, those things were maybe seven grand. We were selling them for like 1200 bucks, you know, which yeah. is basically what it costs us awesome. to, to like get here, them and build them and them. ship them. Yep. Yeah. We just wanted people using them. Uh, no concern for the liability or anything like that. Cause of course not. Uh, I know at that point it didn't matter. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But times were different, man. They really were different. Times were a little different. But. Yeah. Nowadays you got to probably test those things have liability because if someone did hit it and doesn't do its job, like there's a ton. Who knows? Yeah. There's <laughs> so much behind it now. Yeah. For, for the most part, dirt bike guys, they understand that they're accepting their own risk, that yeah. they're, they're what they're doing, but, uh, um, but not all of them do No. I've been the victim of one of them that decided not to. Oh man! Uh, um, so the uh, uh, th that went on, and I started doing these airbags. And a quick side story is that that grew into a a business where where uh, um, I started building custom bags. Worked a lot with with some different like of the big stunts and big cool. you know uh, opportunities that are out there. And so and they started building bounce houses. Uh, no, <laughs> I should have, it probably would have been more lucrative, <laughs> Probably, but, uh, um, but like, like if you see like videos of like Travis jumping in Vegas, right. 
uh, um, you'll see my bag. If you knew what you were looking for, yeah. you would see some of my bags there. So Nitro Circus That's became awesome. a, a, a major client for me at the time. Rad, and, man. And uh, we get along great because we all see things in a very creative sort of push the limits yeah. context. Yeah. And so, uh, so build a lot of bags for Nitro Circus and, uh, um, that still goes on to this day. Cool. Uh, but it's, but it's not a company I've ever, it's like this quiet, it's just kind little, of behind the scenes, little, yeah. little side well, that's hustle. Awesome. That's you know great I mean? though. Uh, um, I don't do theirs for cost. Yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a little different now, <laughs> but, but, but I'm sure I'm, I'm, You're it's, still it's not up. my main business. I'm yeah. sure I'm the most competitive by far. Yeah. But, uh, um, Anyways, the, uh, uh, during that time, I connected with this uh, guy named Kyle Loza. I had a handful of freestyle guys I was working with, but one in particular is this kid named Kyle Loza. He was a kid at the time, 16. And uh, I started working with him to do jump shows. And he had, this, uh, he had this extraordinary talent, like he was special. And so Kyle, within a, a short amount of time, went from uh, just doing some jump shows, trying to figure it out, jumping the ramp in third gear when he's supposed to be jumping it in second, you know, but he, but he put in the work and he just had, he has that super it factor about yeah. everything that he does. And so, uh, um, he designed this trick and this was in the beginning of X games the body and, burial. And this was the body burial. It's Sick. called the vault. And, uh, Someone had done a body burial before, a friend of mine named Chuck Carruthers, and he did this body burial where you basically grab the handlebar, grab the seat. There's always a kind of a grab place by the seat and then let go and kind of do a barrel roll and grab back on. So wild. Uh, it's called the Corolla. So it's, uh, it's an incredible trick. And he had pulled that trick. And at the time, backflips uh, had just gotten going and sort of the the ceiling of the sport had kind of been blown up the backflip direction. Yep. Mm -hmm. But the burial direction... <clears throat> Uh, was still, you know, there were still walls there. So, uh, well, it goes against like physics, like physics and everything <laughs> yeah. to do it. Like a backflip, okay, it rotates, but like trying to, you're forcing yourself to do something and yeah. you can't like throw yourself <laughs> either because you throw the bike. Like. Yeah. There's crazy physics involved, right? And there's all these like, uh, like hidden inertia walls that you run into that like will slow you and you'd be surprised how much you physically can adjust all sorts of elements of that. Right. Same with the backflip really. Uh, um, but, but so he, he goes to the X games and at the time the X games is like hardcore metal militia controls it. Yeah. Like you will go in there and you might be the baddest dude, but they're not just going to let you walk into their party. Right. Really? Mm -hmm. So metal militia is like influencing everything over there. They're like well, the localized dude, type of deal. I was just going to make the correlation. <laughs> Locals because only. They essentially, it was their house and they were not just going to, you know, make it easy for you. The intimidation was real. Okay. Uh, um, but I came out of that like hardcore local environment. And so I kind of saw it, got it. Uh, um, and you know, was like, okay, we don't need to get caught up in the intimidation. Let's just do the thing. Right. And to the point where we even came across this, like right before you're supposed to go do this trick. And it's like, you're scared. It's a gnarly, gnarly trick. You're in the staple center. There's it's like massive 40,000 I mean, people watching. there. Yep. You're, you got all the I cameras. It. It's prime time. It's, it's, it's the whole deal. And, uh, um, and they would like do the whole, like drop some bolts under your bike thing when you're not looking. And then you come across, what are these bolts under my bike from? Wow. Right, right that to go. Mental games, total mental games. Right. And I, I don't know who did that or, or, or what, but I, I know that the games were on. Damn. They were not messing around. And so you brought him to there as a writer or. So I, so basically, at, okay. I jumped a little bit there at that point. I had transitioned because I was doing all these events, but what I found out was I was better at communicating, uh, the writers and the, and the corporations tend to speak different languages uh -huh. and I could speak both languages. And so because of that, that's a simple way to put it, but because of that, I was able to basically go, you know what? I probably, my best strength is not just hauling these ramps around and setting them up. My best strength is kind of telling these people how to do it. Awesome. And so, uh, um, I had the relationships and I just started kind of stepping into that role. And so I, I like a manager. opened up a agency. Yeah. Oh, cool. And so, uh, to represent some athletes and, and, you know, uh, see where, where things went that direction. And anyways, it, uh, at that point, Kyle, uh, we were representing Kyle and we went to, 
he had this trick. And so it's hard to get into X Games, even if you have a trick. It's it's very much a corporate world still. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to you've got to have you got to be aligned with the right sponsors. You got to have makes the, sense. Yeah, you got to be able to deliver. Uh, even if you have some random trick, that doesn't mean you're going to get the opportunity to sit in front of their cameras and risk the ability of you freezing up because yeah, they can't true. afford that. I yeah, mean, makes the sense. TV time is extraordinary and they can't have you there unless they know. And so, oh, if, wow. especially sense. if you're new and you don't have the bag, the name, you don't have the name, you don't have the proven <clears throat> consistency that you can deliver yeah. on what you're saying. Uh, it's difficult. And then, so there, there's a board of people that basically uh, let you in or don't let you in. Wow. You know, so you have to get, get past that. Uh, and in order to do so, it's very hard to keep a trick under wraps also yeah. because you have to present it to all these people. And this is a, a board of peers within the sport. So, so everyone's talking about it. Of course. Yeah. So, so there's this sort of you know, so much doing. pressure yeah. going on for every, uh. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's intense. And so, and then you're also like, okay, n- now you got the invite and you know, you got this trick and now you're going to the sponsors and you're like, Hey, uh, you know, at the time, a company like monster, I see you got the monster fridge rock in here. Nice. Yeah. Uh, um, a company like monster was breaking into the sport really strong also. And, and those guys were literally like rolling around X games with cash in their hands, ready to, to it's connect with the person that people. showed up. Cause it was, it was happening kind of that quickly. And wow. that like, uh, well, and um, there was a war between like rockstar and monster. Like they were, fighting hard oh, to so like hard. be yeah. the strongest. I mean, it really elevated yeah. a lot of motorsports that, that war. Between was that before them. monster sold too? Or was that like back in their Hanson days? Well, Hanson's and monster basically, as I understand it, uh, um, Hanson's monster originally was, was a division of Hanson's. Okay. Yeah. And then monster yep. outgrew everything. Yeah. And I think they either they still own Hanson's or they okay. sold Hanson's off. But, oh, so monster is, but, but uh, are they still self-owned? Well, uh, no, it's a publicly traded it's publicly company traded, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that company is like a you know billion billion dollar company. Crazy, man. Uh, it's absolutely gone through the roof. Built on the on the backs of of these action sports, yeah. and mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy that they continue to invest in those places also, good. and I hope they continue to uh, put their money there. Uh, it sure seems like they will. Um, but but yeah, so you're you're trying to get these deals. We had gotten a, a monster deal. There was a movie coming out that 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 week that was big it was called hot rod wow oh, yeah, yeah. you guys remember hot <laughs> yeah, rod you guys for sure know hot rod yeah. it's like yeah. one of those cult movies right yeah <laughs> yeah it is yes <laughs> so uh um it's one of those things at the time it was like this is so cool we're doing the hot rod thing but in hindsight it's almost like we should have never done the hot rod <laughs> thing dude <laughs> because it was money in his pocket at the time and 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 that was all good and it was also showed him as a as a marketable person and opened yeah. the door to yeah. to this this particular area of marketing so did he dress up like hot rod is that what it was when he, he did wore, it he uh, wore his he had his gear all custom done that's and right. it was done in that hot rod sort of yeah. design that's right yeah and so uh um <laughs> The money was there though, right? The check cashed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Man. he's got thrown in at that point. So at that point he gets thrown in, uh, but he delivers cause he's, he's ice in the veins. He's good to go. He's yeah. prepared. Uh, and we did a lot, you know, to, to make sure that was the case also. Yeah. yeah we weren't, we weren't rolling into this with, you know, blind. We were rolling in with, you know, Confident. our heads on straight and, yep. and we had a, a real plan. Uh, as much as we were rookies, we weren't rookies. Yeah. And so, uh, um, we did a lot of things. We came back the, the next year, he had another new trick. We didn't have to work for an invite cause he was the, he was the back. He was so the, the first year. He, yeah. He got gold. He got gold. One first gold. Year. So first he did year. do the, yeah. so he did the best trick, did the best trick. Yeah. One gold. It was the, which is huge. Best trick is like, okay, if there's the sort of outer edge of the most risky, the most, yeah. uh, undeveloped you know, like, okay, well, let's push the sport a little further. It's, it's in this you know, yeah. pocket that it happens. And so, uh, yeah, so he did that. He won gold. Wow. Uh, came back the next year. This was great because we didn't have to, uh, um, we didn't have to show your cards before you come back. You're, You're already ready to go. Been, yeah. And I remember I was down in Baja and, uh, one of the other clients that, that I'm lucky to work with is a guy named Johnny Campbell. And, uh, he's, 11 time Baja 1000 champion. Legend. Uh, um, and we spend a lot of time in Baja. I was down in Baja with him and I get a call from Kyle and, uh, it's actually Kyle's brother who's sitting on the outside of the foam pit. 
And, and uh, um, he basically just picks up the phone. He says, Kyle just won another gold medal. And uh, he says it in this very like, like make your skin stand up kind of statement like, of what is authority. Happened? Like, and I'm like, and I know this young man is so talented and so like creative. And I'm like, tell me what he did. <laughs> tell me what this guy did. And uh, um, he invented a trick uh, called the electric doom. And it's basically, uh, I don't know how to explain it to you without seeing it, Yeah. but essentially, uh, uh, it's a bar hop where you basically take the handlebars, you bring your whole body through the handlebars, then you let go, then you backflip your body. <laughs> I remember that now, yeah. And then you grab one-handed and come back around onto your bike while soaring through the air 75 feet. It's, uh, it's, it, the risk wow. level is, is out of this world. The athleticism is out of this world. The acrobatic <laughs> element to it is unbelievable. I mean, is he like uh, practicing like gymnasts or something to learn how to do these flips or is he like, he's just, he, what he is, 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 uh, well, he's a skater. He, he really loves to skate. He's so talented. And he's just dude. a super, super talented he's young He's an man. amazing tattoo artist as well. He's, really? art, like yeah. I said, he's just, he's just very talented. He's one of the most talented tattoo artists I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, um, and just artists in general. So anyways, uh, um, we come back and there's a lot of people are going for it. Now we've got people doing double flips or attempting double flips. Yeah. Uh, um, we got people attempting uh, um, all sorts of tricks. And we're like, okay, this is a stacked deal and so we did all everything right he had the trick he had everything uh he had the sponsors lined out we we got rid of the, we weren't running the hot rod stuff anymore you know we had like some <laughs> that's a real <laughs> we had some A-star, cool stuff yeah. for what it was yeah i think it was a stars actually we had yeah. signed a deal with a stars which at the time you couldn't even get a stars gear in america it was only available in italy the boots were here but they yeah, would not, not the sell gear. the gear here oh, wow. so it was kind of a big deal to a have a yeah. stars gear it was a I mean, like, it now like signal I mean, when he was running, everyone wanted it, man. That was like the thing. Yeah. It was the cool thing. Yeah. So, so, uh, um, so, and then we also bought, uh, we're super strategic, dude. We don't mess around. We bought, uh, like 400 tickets. Really? And put his friends and family all together in one zone and said, Genius. here's your ticket. I'm excited you're here. When Kyle goes, you make more noise than you've ever made in your life. So which genius. they were going to do anyways. Yeah, yeah but, but still. But, like, <clears throat> but, but that, like, you, that, you, the judges hear that, you know. When you want to set off a stadium, yep. you know, you need to have a sort of a nucleus to spark that. Genius. Yeah. And so uh, we were going to make sure, no matter what, that that got sparked. And he pulled the trick, and it, it didn't matter what they did or didn't do because that whole place just went. <laughs> ballistic. Ballistic, yeah. Uh, um, so... So it was all good, but, uh, uh, but like I said, we, you know, it's, it's a business Mm -hmm. and people get really caught up in the, it's a sport and I respect that it's a sport, but it's to, at, in that moment, it's a business. It is. Yeah. In that moment, it's a competition. Yeah. And within the boundaries you can play. Yeah. You know, and uh, the boundaries there were very loose. Yeah. And, uh, well, and that's, uh, it allows you to be creative and think out of the box. And I mean, there's still like tons of opportunity for people to think out of the box. Not everything has been no, done. There's, there's so still much, a bunch of yes. unknown. Never going to stop. And yeah. that's the, that's the key. Like you don't have to go out there and spend all the money in the world. You have to just be creative and just to think out of the box, be different, like, and have fun with it. Like you're at that point, you're like, you're having fun with it. You're like, watch, this is going to be awesome. We're going to get 400 of these seats. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> you're not even thinking really about the value of you're like, this is going to be so rad when everybody lights up. Oh, like everyone's <laughs> freaking out. Yeah. So at this point you went from <clears throat> surfing to starting your actual sports company to now managing people or the airbag company as well. And then now managing people as well. So what, I guess at this point in life, You've already done so much. We had done a lot. Yeah. And then we also shot a TV show uh, during that time. We did a whole, uh, at that, at that point, for whatever reason, I actually, I think it had to do with, there was a, there was an actor strike back then. Okay. And reality TV shows just became oh, like the blue thing. Up. Yeah. yeah. So we got tapped for a reality TV show and shot a whole season. Uh, but it was also right at, at, uh, um, right at 2008 where the market oh, crashed. Yeah, everything, yeah. And so, uh, so the network that our TV show was slated for ended up shutting down. So anyways, that- Wait, was it uh, that was like Fuel? A, 
it wasn't fuel. Uh, it would have mm. been great to be on fuel. Yeah. But no, no, it wasn't fuel. But it was I a. It was that a, channel was so rad. It was a network that that uh, CMT Country Music Television had started a side oh, okay. network or whatever. Nice. And uh, they were just they were developing content for yeah. it and whatnot. Uh, um, so we had this thing going and, and that could have been really extraordinary if it had actually, aired. uh, sent, you know, made its way to air, uh, who knows what we could have done with it. Yeah. But, uh, it's like anything you watch it back now and I'm kind of like, Oh, oh, oh <laughs> I know, <man>. dude, <laughs> dodged, I get that. dodged a bullet. Yeah. I'm so glad it's no. in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I love the people we did it with. I can tell you that much. That's cool. Uh, um, anyways, uh, so from there we transition, we, we continue to do, uh, events and whatnot, uh, continue to work with some very select athletes. We're not like, you know, work with everybody type of people. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense, you know, and then I've tra transitioned into, uh, working with businesses. And so we spend a lot of our time, uh, consulting with different businesses on, you know, marketing, sales, uh, identity messaging, yeah. uh, a lot of, a lot in the digital space now. So, uh, we spend a lot of time focusing on, you know, digital marketing and like SEO, SEM, it's tough. you know, it's, it's uh, tough. that whole so world tough. is a world that we spend a lot of time in nowadays, attribution. And sometimes I wish we could just go back to the print days. It seemed like it was so much easier yeah. back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but back then oh, it didn't seem easy. I skipped over the action sports show. Yes. I skipped over a bunch of stuff, but <laughs> that, that's what one of the areas that, that I got to really appreciate Bryant's talent for the first time firsthand is that- He's uh, pretty damn talented, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we launched a uh, a show. You could call it a podcast. At the time, we didn't really give it- I don't it, think it was a podcast we didn't give it, yet. We, 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 we pushed it onto some podcast platforms okay. like iTunes and whatnot. Yeah. But, uh, um, but it's essentially like a radio show. And then uh, so shortly awesome. thereafter, we brought in some cameras. And the whole idea of the radio show is called the Action Sports Show. Uh, and this was like, you know, gosh, like eight, eight or ten years yeah. ago, maybe or something. Uh, not quite ten years ago, maybe eight years, eight years ago. Eight years ago, probably. Uh, we had all these relationships, and we just wanted to hear people's stories, just much like you guys are yeah. doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, and so we did it weekly. And it's a monster to do one of these things weekly for an extended period of time. It takes so much production work, so, so much, much time, setup, so much preparation. It really, it seems pretty easy to me. <laughs> <You just show laughs> up. Sean, just all right. I'm here, guys. Let's, <laughs> let's talk. See ya. <laughs> Sean's enough, the boss. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> no, so, but it is. It's definitely. It takes its own team to do. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, we had a blast though. I mean, getting to know Dude, all those so people, fun. having fun with all of them. When, when we were, the stuff we did with you, we only brought you out for like the, the really special stuff. So, yeah. um, I don't know if we had you at the Toyota Escondido dealership. The much. second one, not the first one. Actually, it was like, Dude, I do remember seeing. Yeah. So anyways, this. we did do, we did two of them at the Toyota Escondido. Okay. I remember okay. we shot two of them, but you brought us out. I think the first thing we did was with, um, McGrath. So we did one at, uh, we did a couple at McGrath's and yeah. I can tell you if this studio was just a little closer, that show would probably know, still be man. going and we'd I be know. one of the other shows in this room right here. I agree. Uh, um, this, this is a great, incredible studio. You've got yourself going cool. here, fellas. But anyway, so yeah, we brought you out and we were going live at the time yeah, on, it was crazy. on trans world, which was this when we were doing live Facebook, yep. live YouTube, but. Uh, so we're going live on trans world and live on McGrath's Facebook page and trans world was like 1.7 million followers Dude. and McGrath's 700,000 followers on Facebook. And we were simultaneously going live on both. And we were getting these extraordinary numbers Huge from these shows, numbers, you know? man. And so it was, uh, um, it was this like, okay, this is amazing. And I, I really like the live element of it. I mean, I, mm -hmm. it changes things. It like, does change things. It's very stressful, but it's also like. It's real. It's live. It's real. It's right now. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, do. Yeah. I do too. I think the live is awesome. Um, it's own world for sure. The cool thing is like, we learned so much from that. I mean, Walker over here, he's a madman with life. Like now okay. he just got that thing. Like he's so dialed he's with it. Dial. He, he's got it so good, but it was all started from there. Like really? I mean, yes, we were doing the looks little, you know, short course races, the regional series. Yeah. But, um, th that, the show was so much next level, you know? Right. It was so much, we learned so much from that. It was such a cool show. The show was so dope, man. I wish <laughs> we were all closer because it'd be so cool to keep doing. It was a really cool show. We'll, we'll have to show it to you sometime. Yeah, it was yeah. rad. I'm sure it's dated at this point, but 
but uh, we would we would typically have a panel. We'd do a couch, you know. I and saw a, it was few a cool of these. set. It was a cool yeah. set. So you'd have like me. Uh, Grant Langston was often a co-host there. Yeah. Uh, McGrath was a co-host yeah. very often. Uh, and bring in um, writers in, and then we'd bring in writers uh, either either through like through like a video or like an iChat type deal. Yeah. Uh, um, that's or, right. I forgot about we did that. Yeah. Which was pretty trick, which was, was cool because cool. your technology could do it for yeah, us. And that was cool. I didn't know if the, how we were going to be doing that. It worked but, out well though, but it worked out. Yeah. Uh, um, we had Aaron Nixon from monster on a few times. Oh, I that think, was cool too. There. That was super fun. He did a really good job. Aaron does great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, what's his name? The Sada on maybe once. I don't know. My favorite writer was, uh, what's the cowboy dude? Uh, Oh, Aaron Plessinger. Aaron Plessinger was hilarious, man. Yes. He came on and started Bro. singing Zach Brown. It was the best. <laughs> it was the best show. He is down when it comes to being an entertainer. He, he is, is. He is very. Inter- he's it. an entertainer I for mean, sure. He's pretty entertaining on his bike, too. Watching he is. Race. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, he is. No, he's epic, yes, he man. Is. Yeah. He's such a good dude. Yeah. So uh, um, that was super fun. We did that show for a long time, and it evolved over from initially being a radio show then we were on espn for a while so we were afternoon drive time uh and that was totally cool also because you know that you know the experience is really interesting being on on air radio uh um but then when we like i said when we transitioned into those huge facebook audiences i we just loved it because we were we were like we were just engaging with so many people and and there's something super fun about that. And the feedback. And the live chat me, was so cool. The chat. Yeah. yeah. Chatting and, and you're getting people like actually asking questions about oh, what you're talking awesome. about. Oh, it's yeah. rad. That's an awesome feeling. Like it hypes everyone up, I think. Yeah. 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 For sure. It was cool. For sure. For sure. That was a fun dude. That was, that was so awesome. Well, we got yeah, to, so, I think we should start doing it. Like even if we do like three times a year or four times a year, it'd be really cool to do another live show. I agree. I and agree, it'd be I easier agree. if we're doing it like, you know, say you do it four times a year. I mean, just kind of catch up throughout the year, set up some different shows. It'd be really cool. It was, I know it was Jim, fun. Jeremy's down to do it. So uh, um, we just need to figure out a time and, yeah, that'd be cool. and make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's so good on on air and we still have his, uh, the trans world, dude, sadly that trans world Facebook, it had, like I said, it had like 1.7 million. Uh, like, so big. Legit action sports racing. Yeah followers and uh trans world got like bought by some company i forget yeah, I the details what the, the camera, of it yeah uh, um and they just shut it down dude what a waste they just, they just closed it down i mean it's so hard in my mind to build that kind of followership and especially so valuable that niche it was so uh, within within a niche that matters to me and you but obviously doesn't matter to, yeah. them, to them it doesn't matter but uh um I'm, i think they're a big publishing company but yeah you would think there would be a way to like, hey, can we just buy that can Facebook buy that? page? Exactly, yeah. let's like, buy that page. Yeah, I mean, just 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 it, can we just down. have it? Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just send it over. Too bad you couldn't just release Gibson it Gibson would be you. happy to have it. I'll, I'll take exactly. it. Yeah. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so now you're a you're um, a manager, right? And that, it would be like an action sports manager. Is that kind of what you're where you're at or now more mostly I'm I'm a consultant, a business consultant. So I work with a couple different brands and uh, um uh, and we just develop, uh, you know, marketing channels and, you know, uh, sales channels and just overall business strategy. And now do you work usually uh, with more like, you know, legacy type of brands, established brands, or are you focused more like on new brands? I mean, would you rather start with someone that's been doing it for a while, has a lot of old tricks or start off fresh with someone new and build it? Is it I like the question, but it's, it's a, it's just a case by case situation. So I'm a sucker for, uh, for wanting to see people succeed. I want people to yes. win. Yeah. And so th- I have to be careful myself of not throwing myself into some of these programs that like, yeah, you have a, you have a bit of a vision. I, I want, you want to win, but you're not really willing to, and you start to see the signals of like why they're not winning. Yeah. And you're like, you're not going to change that. And if you're not going to change that, then I'm not going to be able to really do what I need to do. Fair. And so, Sometimes I have to be careful with those startup programs because there's more enthusiasm than substance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I have to make sure that, that I'm, you know, really vetting what I'm getting into. Of yeah. course, uh, um, the legacy brands are great, but you, you can run into the exact same issue there of like, look, we've, we've followed this model uh, that's gotten us here and uh, we want to go here. But we want to do it by staying on the same model. The okay. Same thing. Uh, do you guys see what you just said right there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now, 
now that we're on that, <laughs> we, me and you were talking a little bit ago before the show about social media marketing, yeah, where it came from, where it is now, where it's going. I kind of want to jump on that a little bit and, and the marketing yeah. side of that stuff. So it's like you had you made some very good points of what where's the ROI, you know, showing are people actually purchasing or people actually joining the brand, you know, from the social media reels or videos or whatever else. So like let's chat with that a little bit. What was that? Uh, excuse me, you know, <laughs> I had some Mexican food last night. <laughs> That's so great. He's literally doing uh Yeah, they're like drilling right in the wall next door. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Is that the is that the Gibson R and D facility? It over is, there? Yeah, yeah. Is that the is that the exhaust you guys are working on? I for must be. That no, sounds great. We're, we're blowing up over here. We're knocking down walls. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you, did you guys and we'll we will get to this, but yeah. uh did you guys ever think about like, okay, uh, since all these electric cars sound lame <laughs> and we need to make some sort of, some sort of, uh, external enthusiasm meter for these things, making those kind of exhaust. We, uh, you know, we were working with like kicker and stuff back in the day to try, yeah. you know, try and maybe do some speakers. I know our friends over at, uh, Borla, they did it. They have like an electric sound and stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. It's like, I don't no say no idea. yet. Don't say no right now. We're going to make battery mounts, you know, lightweight battery mounts or something. Okay. Accessories. There's some accessories for these yeah, cars. Figuring, yeah, I'm not sure. That's fair. All right. All right. Just curious. Dude, that scared the shit out of me. That was crazy. <laughs> I was like, what is that sound <laughs> right now? Like, I'm hungry. Like. <laughs> uh, damn you neighbors. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I guess one of the things that we were chatting about and, and, uh, and we got into it because we were talking about, you know, your production and, and what you're tasked with doing often and, yeah. and how there's sometimes a difference because, uh, um, you shoot this stuff and it's beautiful and it's like, uh, you know, you said you were shooting in 6k. I yeah. asked you if you were shooting in 8k yet. And, and we talked about how you're often shooting for the future because, you never know when this stuff's going to come back around and be valuable in 10 years. And if you don't shoot for the future now, it won't really be that wow. valuable. Yes. Then. So yeah, it's something yeah. you have to keep in mind. Wow. But, uh, but, be, but, and the, the scenario is that right now, how often is 6k being seen? It, rarely. Yes. Right? Not, At best. How often everything is 4k is down, being seen? Yeah. Everything's getting downgraded to go on to Instagram, Facebook. You right. Know, and what that. is, is Instagram 720? <laughs> if that, I don't know if it's 720. I would say, I'd say maybe I'll say, yeah, best, 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 probably 720. Okay. So it's maybe it's 1080, 720 yeah. though, I think is what it is. And so it's just so interesting that, uh, um, that we're shooting with such sensitivity to the, to the pixels. And, and, uh, we started talking then about, you know, uh, what really we, sp if we're, if we're going to spend such a enormous amount of energy on making sure that the pixels are so high, uh, and we're balancing, we only have, we have a pie worth of, worth of energy that some companies purchase from us and we're giving them 75% of it towards a pixel pie that, <laughs> that is, is not really going to be applicable for yeah. them now. Uh, and then we're only be able to give them 25% what's left towards the quality of the content or the storytelling or any of the other elements. Uh, and it's because often they're asking for it that way. And then we, we, we flop from that into, uh, um, you know, where attribution is sin sitting for these guys often right now in these boardrooms that are, uh, that are requesting customer or, or work like what you provide. Yeah. Uh, um, and how with the digital attribution that you see from like a Google, like a looker studio, uh, which is formerly data studio, but now called looker studio, uh, and, uh, or Google analytics or Google for, uh, specifically, um, designed to interpret customer behavior a certain way. Uh, that way that it's designed to interpret customer behavior through interactions all the way down to digital transaction, but really weighted towards interactions and weighted heavily towards engagement. Uh, um, is that really transitioning in, in an appropriate way for these companies who are leveraging their whole marketing budget towards it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or is it re-engineering re the budget to just feed the attribution model? Right. Yeah. So if the attribution model is designed to read this way, well, then I'm going to my third party partners and myself are going to read it and go, OK, well, I'm now feeding what's best for the attribution model versus really having an individual identity for my own company and going, I know what transitions to sales for me mm -hmm. and the attribution model 
is is an element, but not the whole thing. The attribution model is kind of that feel good model. Like you feel like okay, you can you, like you I've can seen absolutely. it. There's some ROI yeah. on it, but yeah. it's it makes you feel good that your money got spent well, but doesn't really is it, correlate into actual brand identity, sales, and longevity. Right. And what it tends to I think do is is uh, uh, in some ways devalue the brand identity elements and devalue the uh, the quality of content elements. Uh, it, it doesn't have to, but I think often it, it does. does. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do that, I think that it, you're, you're playing into this sort of robotic context of that people, uh, become this sort of like, uh, low grade, uh, you know, low grade lead. Mm -hmm. And so you you turn it all funnels towards, towards these low grade leads because you can get more of them, uh, even though they don't really turn into great business, uh, ever or community you not everybody's searching doing this for purely for transactional purposes some are doing it to build community and yeah. then ultimately have an organic transaction or a relational transaction experience hopefully uh, um, but that community all these different elements it's hard to quantify still and these attribution models are pretty old well, and I They're would based love to, on pretty old. I'd love to concepts. go to look at like social media and stuff, and look at it as a uh, like maybe a sales channel, right? And be sure. able to generate some sales from it. Um, but I think uh, every time I try to do that, and kind of get let down more or less. And I I feel like you know social media is more of like a entertainment platform. And it's almost like you. if we looked at it like we did the print days with print ads, people opened up a magazine to be entertained and look for stuff. They might be shopping in, in the catalog, but you're never going to be able to hit all the masses. And you really could have never measure the success of a print ad. But it was strictly at that point, it was a branding opportunity. And I think social media is kind of coming to that point where it's a branding opportunity and you have a way to effectively brand your brand through so many different offerings, whether it be video, photo, you know, and I guess working with other companies and sharing posts and stuff like, I guess like sometimes it's easy to lose focus that it is a networking platform and all we have to do is just network. Network. I mean, I love what, I love what you're saying. And I think it, the collaborative nature of the strength of collaboration that is yeah. available through social media is like, is way underutilized because uh -huh. everybody's a little like brand sensitive. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I checked out a little bit of Gibson. I think you guys have like 60,000 followers on social, yeah. uh, on, on Facebook. You have maybe 30,000, a total of like 120 or something like that. Yeah. Right. Aggregate. And I, uh, um, that math doesn't pencil, but anyways, it was something like that. <laughs> so we'll it. It. <laughs> okay. Fix that and edit or whatever. Uh, um, uh. Uh, but anyway, something like that. Right. Uh, um, there's this, there's this company that does a, is in there. They do a great, they're a great example to me of like, of collaborative expression, uh, while still being true to their own identity. And it's the Wahoo's fish taco model. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, um, you, you go into Wahoo's fish taco and you're going to see, uh, a crazy amount of other brands, right? And what happens yeah. when you do that is you identify cause as individuals, we're, we, we have the brand identity, yeah. you know, and, and we have a fair amount of brand loyalty and what Wahoo's gets from that in my interpretation of it, uh, um, is that, is that when I walk in as a customer, both, I get a vibe, mm -hmm. but also I get like, oh, that's, you know, uh, whatever that, that's a monster energy logo. Okay. That that's, I, I connect with that. Yeah. That's my, that's my circle. Okay. Makes sense. Or that, that's a, you know, a BMX deal. I connect with that. That's my circle. Yeah. And so all the effort that those brands have put out to create identity. Now you're, you're bridging the gap. Guilty so that by your, association. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Opportunity by association. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, while Wahoo's is still primary Wahoo's and they're strong about it, they're not afraid of these other people. So it does Smart. a lot of things. Uh, one, it makes them communal. It makes them seem like very community oriented, mm, which, yeah. which is super good. Yeah. And then also it, uh, it, it leverages all the, uh, value that all these other brands have worked so hard and spent so much money creating. Yep. Uh, um, and, and by that association gives their brand that same value. And so I think it's, I think it's really, really like a great strategy. And, uh, um, 
I think there's opportunity for that for lots of brands to do it. It's hard yeah. to like find your identity, you know, on social media because, you know, like the memes get so much engagement and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to start doing that. But then you just become like every other damn page out there and it's trying to find like that brand value and how to do it. Yep. I mean, are we sharing poor videos versus high quality videos? What's the engagement? Yeah. You know, there's so much unknown, I guess, from it. And then you look at these people and I mean, you know, some girl just showing her boobs and she's yeah. got millions of followers. And it's yeah. like, what do people really want? Do they want to be entertained or they want information? And it's, it's a challenge trying to figure that out. And if you, it's, it, it tells a lot about the, what's happening there when the memes get so much attention it's because crazy. the meme has so little value. Uh, yeah. really. uh, um, the people that are watching the memes, they're getting a, a like a little four second chuckle mm -hmm. and then they're moving on. Right. But that's yeah. what they're looking for. Give me a four second chuckle. So that's right. The, that's what that platform is for. So why not find your way to give people a four second chuckle? The TNA thing totally works, but it works. I think, it's not my vibe at all. Like yeah. It works to a different direction. It works for a different direction for sure. Uh, but it's still not translating anything. But it's, and it gives you the same thing. But you, so when you look at it, you go, okay, well, I think that humor to me is one of the best ways to engage with people. Oh, it is. Uh, to get significant engagement. Because I agree. Because you can do, uh, you know, you could do some profound video, but you're going to have to have the time it takes for someone to appreciate. Unless you've got someone that has the, the ability to deliver a profoundness about your brand in yeah. such a tiny window while making it funny, you know, that's the hard part. Uh, you're pretty funny. Eh, funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's really tough. It's tough to understand what works, but it's also tough to guess what's next as well. I don't think you have to guess what's next. You have to just go just back to like our first trend. part of the conversation and think out of the box, have fun with it, stay relevant, yeah. and you know, not lose focus of your passion and being, you know, taking advantage of being an enthusiast of your own brand, right? And being an enthusiast of your own industry. I mean, it's not like we're suit and ties coming into someone's, you know, business trying yeah. to tell them how to do it like we, we live and breathe all the stuff that we do. What, you know, every success that we've had isn't something we had to dream up of and, you know, and you just did plan it. and go to consulting groups and give someone to right. give us the ideas. It just, oh, light bulb. That's going to be awesome and fun. Let's go do it. And we didn't really care about the results because it was just you were just fun. doing what you do. Like, same with like yeah. this podcast. We just did it because we were doing it because it's for fun. fun. Yeah. Like we don't have any. Just do it you know, unset pressure of it has to be this or these unrealistic goals and we have to generate revenue and generate this. Like it's just fun. And usually that's the, how stuff happens organically. Most pages and most stuff it's because they didn't lose focus of their brand and the fun yeah. and the industry. Like we sell exhaust and there's a voice to the vehicles and it's fun and it's empowerful. And like, I don't know, but it's hard when, you know, the, driving force and the passion is still trying to run a business up top too. It's like, you, you know, so I'm excited for my son to come of age cause he's yeah. so passionate about it and, <laughs> and fun and he enjoys it. And it's like, dude, go. Well, that's, like, that's, that's what I was going to say about that. You know, what's next is it, it's all around you. Uh, you have to be very, I think intentional about not letting your, your circle age itself out Makes and, sense. and having that younger voice that, uh, that like your son, yeah. you know, involved yeah, because that's where your, that's where your trends, you can identify, Absolutely. Them, you know, because they're going to be naturally reflecting yep. where their communities come at and, and what their community values. Yep. And so, and you're going to be able to see it in them if you're paying attention and in their circle. So being you know? open-minded ultimately. <clears throat> well, of and course, it's like, so yeah. come in. like yeah. Gibson, I don't think can go to TikTok, right? It's just, there's not, I, I don't think we go to TikTok and just go, we'll devalue our brand, I think, trying to do it with the videos and the attention. But like Chance, my son, he's got, you know, 40,000 followers. Yeah. His engagement's huge because they can relate to him. And that then, he's like an influencer, obviously, I guess like on TikTok for, for the Gibson. brand. But yeah. I don't think the brand can go there. I think you guys could crush TikTok, absolutely crush TikTok, yeah. have huge followership, like huge. 
Uh, but you would have to re-engineer, reimagine what you what your content looks like for the TikTok audience. Uh, and the TikTok algorithm is really like low bar. It's it's pretty yeah. easy so to drive up start, large numbers. Yeah. And so uh, um, again, like Instagram it, used to be back in the day. Would it translate into? Uh, um, you know, would it translate into legitimate like revenue change? I'm not sure about that. Uh, um, I do think that you guys could absolutely crush it because TikTok is very audio driven, and mm-hmm. you guys, uh, your guys is Obviously, very audio, audio oriented. Yeah, yeah. And so, and it's a passion audio. Your guys' audio is very unique. It's passion. You guys could make TikToks yeah. that, that you you guys could do the Dr. Dre beat with you know yeah, with, exhaust. with exhaust. True, yeah. I mean, you could do some things that would just completely blow the world away. With, That's cool with TikTok uh, with you guys, but. Uh, um, but I understand your point also, the maturity of your interpretation of the brand uh, is sometimes at odds with some of these platforms. Uh, um, but then and, it's almost like, do we still need to be mature? Are we are we aging the business when it doesn't have to? It doesn't have to have an have to age. Yeah. It doesn't have to mature. It can stay relevant within I think the can. age group. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so- Like uh, Monster is never going to grow old and just fizzle out, right? Well, but, it depends. They could. Yeah. yeah, that's up to their leadership to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, but they absolutely and bring could. in the keep, yeah. continue bringing the younger athletes and younger kids in to to keep it young. Yeah, if they if they want to continue to uh, to be the the brand that they are or hold the place that they hold, mm-hmm. uh, then they're going to have to continue to work for it, and it gets harder as you get bigger in some ways because Always. you have more limitations, more liability, more reasons why you can't take the risk. And the young, younger, less, less, uh, um, you know, the, they're not, they're a publicly traded company. Yeah. Some privately owned company can take some crazy risk because there's nobody stopping them. Yeah. And they have some big wins. So, know. uh, without giving up all your secrets and everything in your, your recipe for success, I give you, there was a startup company looking and they got zero followers and they're going to try and dabble into social media and somehow what would be some a couple of tips of advice you would give a newcomer jumping into you know social media i mean it's a there's a handful of different like ways you could play it like you can you could go buy an audience and just swap the names out and 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 give yourself a running start okay which i think if you can get the right audience with the right you know that came from a, a you know a similar community yeah uh, then then you can get a quick running start at things yeah. uh, and i think that's a really functional way to do it I think that the uh, the leveraging the relationships, the collaborative thing is like a definitely a fast lane. Do collaborate, okay. collaborate, collaborate. Uh, um, I think that you know you got to have your a really good you know engaging content plan, uh, um, and you can't be so quick. I think when you're you got to define what you're trying to do. Am, am I trying to just purchase ads? Because some of these ads that you see the actual pages have like zero to no followers. Right. Yeah. Uh, but they're purchasing ads. So you can just run the ad cycle. Yeah. If you're, if you want to just transact business on the platform, but I think, don't you have to have fine. a certain amount or be set up a certain way to have a business account? I thought like, I don't think you, I thought you had to have a certain amount of followers or something to be no. considered a business account. No, no, no. I, you just, in that, in that case, you just basically through your Facebook business account would run ads onto Instagram. Okay. So speaking of ads, yeah. Is it effective just to throw money at it and let it do its thing and not, you know, go through and change the ad and, you know, really try to drive it in or, you know, like, okay, 25 bucks a week and auto generated, just whatever Instagram thinks is right. And they send it out there. They go towards your followers. Or is it important to have the necessary, you know, steps and target audience? I mean, I, I think it's super important to identify who it is you want to target, Yeah, you know, and you can go in as far as taking your, you know, export your database out of your CRM Mm -hmm. and get, you know, and import it, maybe get some lookalike audiences going and let, let Facebook leverage what it determines your audience is to, to create some lookalike audiences and whatnot. Uh, and you can use that to try to sort of zero in like, Oh man, all these guys like, you know, Ford F one fifties. Okay. So I'm going to, I want want an audience of people that like that have identified themselves as fans of this product or, or, you know, uh, Toyota Tundra or, yeah, you know, whatever it might be. So now I was talking to your Instagram trophy trucks. Do you race? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's talk. There racing. we go. That's why I love it. Yeah. Let's jump in that <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, um, so right now I've been uh, co-driving in trophy trucks. Okay. Uh, I've raced some moto. I raced the Baja 1000 in, on dirt bikes. 
Uh, um, but I've been co-driving in the number six uh, trophy truck. Okay. Who's the uh, driver? A driver's a guy named Dan Myers. So All right. One of my clients is a Toyota Escondido, uh, and they're run by the, the Myers family. And they are very passionate about racing, very into racing. And so they've been doing it for a long time. The dad, uh, Gary Myers, uh, started it. And so it's just an authentic thing for them. Like they're all about it. It's family. Family. And so, yeah, so you've got three brothers, uh, Gary, Dan, and Steve. Uh, and then you've even got some of their daughters, uh, which are known as the Myers Girls, Myers Girls Racing. Uh, um, and so they r- currently have a couple of Class 10 trucks or a couple of Class 10 cars. One uh, Indy races, one um, Myers Girls race. And then, uh, and then they have three trophy trucks. Uh, one is known as the old Robbie truck. That's what they refer to it as. I think it was a Robbie Gordon truck. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, and, then, uh, uh, and then Dan Myers is racing a Brenthal number six truck. Rad. Uh, okay, so um, sorry to cut you ahead. off real quick. My wife always asks, like, what's this, what's that? For people that don't know, what's a 10 car? Okay. Like, uh, quickly, like, without, yeah. <laughs> a 10 car is basically like a buggy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah. Two-seater buggy. buggy. Well, there are some one-seaters, but most yeah. are two-seaters. Yep. They're fast. And they have uh, Honda, Honda engines, right? V6s? Um, this, there's, I think, I don't think there's has a Honda engine, but yeah. Yeah. It's a V6 engine. There, yeah. I'm assuming it probably has a Toyota in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then the 10 cars, buggies, open wheel, looks kind of yeah, like doom buggy-ish. Yeah. Like we're yeah, stretched out. Kind of like know. a side-by-side, but bigger, better, like more a, travel. A, like a sand car, kind of, only yeah. a little narrower. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. then um, a six truck is the spec truck, right? So, okay. So no. uh, I want to be real clear here. I have no idea. So okay. there's, there's a <laughs> six truck is smaller. There's a 60, so 6,100 oh, 6, truck. 6,100. Yeah. Okay. So there's 6,100 okay. and then that'd be your spec trophy That's truck. That's a spec trophy. I do know yep. that. So, so when truck. you get down to some of these other, I, I just There's a bunch. There's, so there's so many now. of yeah, them. I, know. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know what defines them. Yeah. There's no 10. And then you have the class one car, which is like a 10 like car, a but with 10 V8s. Car, yeah. 10 car, a little bit bigger V8. Almost uh, unlimited. Tro- yeah. Almost trophy truck with no body yeah, type yeah, of deal. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Those yeah. one cars are bad machines. They're so badass. They're so, they were like the elite, but now there's trophy trucks and trophy trucks. Uh, I mean, well, it's like you see a trophy truck ripping out there and just, just, so just kind of walking oh, in the way it gosh, catches air. It's and unreal. it's just like, <laughs> it's so sick. Uh, <laughs> so was yeah. last year your first Baja 1000 then? No, I had raced it like I said on on in moto before. That's right. Okay, yeah. So you raced but, you raced it on a on a dirt bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. sketch. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah, it's really so gnarly, gnarly actually. Uh, I raced my section was uh, we had went. This was uh, this race went all the way to Cabo. It was the second longest Baja one thousand ever. And uh, my section, I, like, I had six hundred miles. I had two three hundred mile sections, something like that, so right, right around there. And anyways, I got on the bike at night. And didn't get to pre-run my section. Oh my god! And so uh, we had built this insane XR650. Uh, it was the last year of the 450s, or the first year of the 450s, the last year of the 650s for Honda. Okay. okay. And uh, um, we had, and because I work with Johnny Campbell, we had the Johnny Campbell Spec 650. Sick. And this thing was a factory super machine. Wow. And so uh, we were so stoked. I remember I got on the bike, uh, and right away just stood the thing up on the back wheel and just rode it for like a mile and a half. And my pit crews just were all like, giggling. Hey, hey, calm down. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just getting to know the old girl. Right here. It's on. <laughs> I got 300 miles in front of me, fellas. <laughs> and so, uh, um, oh, that's awesome. So, you know, we were on the road for a little bit before we, we, uh, we got back on the trail at this particular pit. And so, uh, yeah, so ran the pit all through the night. I mean, it was like the surface of the moon, the stuff I was on. It was like this lake bed, dry lake bed stuff. And, uh, um, and are you just pinned? I mean, are you going as fast as you can the whole as time? As fast as you can. Absolutely. I mean, it's a race, but so wild there's, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta not crash. Yeah. There's a uh, fine line <laughs> and you can only go as fast as you can see to slow down. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, it's night time. Maybe a little faster than that. <laughs> yeah. A little fast, <laughs> yeah, just a little, little bit faster than you can see to slow down. Yeah. And so at nighttime, especially along the coast, uh, moisture gets in the air. Sometimes there's some challenges and whatnot. Uh, well, and then um, you're also on a dirt bike. You can't put like five HIDs, a giant light bar on this no, thing too. No, it's very, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a very inten- there's a very intentional lighting scenario that goes on. And we had these at the time. Now we're, you'll see more like the, 
like the Baja Designs, Rigid, those kind yep. of guys making these these killer cans that yeah. go on there. But back then we were running these two big uh, HIDs, HIDs, yeah, like the Hella, the red yep. ones, yeah. Wow. They're and, heavy and they're heavy. They weigh down the front of the bike significantly. Wow. Uh, um, and one of the things that's really important is you're dealing with your own pupils, right? So any reflection you get is going to, um, it's going to open up your pupils yeah. or close down your pupils. Sorry. So that you and can't see as far. You don't want your pupils to close down. You yeah. want them wide open. Oh. And so you have to be, you have to just really block out any shiny object Wow. You have to paint the front fender black because you're doing everything you can to manage fatigue and, uh, one of the reasons that we liked those lights so much is they weren't so hot. And so you could get a good shadow cast so you could understand when you were coming upon an obstacle or a dip or ditch or mm, whoop or something okay. like that. And you could get an idea of based on the shadow of what kind of uh, angle and distance you're looking at till the next one. Uh, but also you really want to have as quality of vision as possible. So yeah, that's uh, probably so, pretty important when you're racing at night. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you really ha Just have this gnarly. very intentional strategy to not, uh, mess with your pupil size. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Dude. you have a lot of control, obviously being the rider, the, you know, you're controlling your destiny. How was it to jump in the passenger seat and be a co-driver? I mean, I'm a horrible passenger and it would be, a, it's a whole different challenge, right? I totally understand that. And I think that it requires, like I said, that, that, uh, uh, that high level of risk tolerance yeah. individual. It's, I mean, are you guys like, you know, sleeping in the same bed, getting yeah. to know each other, really just kind of like <laughs> being to one, you know, spending the week together. Like in this case, I know the guy quite well and, uh, and he's a great driver and he's not a, uh, he's not a guy that, uh, is going to take unnecessary risks also, okay. you know, in a trophy truck, Good. you're dealing with this extraordinarily expensive vehicle, uh, and you're essentially racing first and foremost against the elements. Because if you can keep the vehicle together and keep it moving to the finish, forward, man. Yeah. Uh, without the time spent down fixing the vehicle, then that's that's race that's win win number one, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, um, there, you can either just mat it down and just go. Hopefully, this thing holds together, and if it does, <laughs> then it does. Does not Robbie do it that and way? A lot of guys do <laughs> it that way, and, do. and most of them, it's a failing, you know, yeah, it doesn't work. strategy. Uh, um, this guy goes really fast also. Uh, and so there are plenty of times where uh, I'm just like, like, you know, like <laughs> you have your straps, right. And your straps become like your place for your hands oh, yeah. when, when everything's like, okay, we're know. going, but you're talking about a trophy truck. I mean, these things don't, uh, they're not they, like, they can handle a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So even, uh, even like we got into some battles, man, where we are just, at night in the dust and so rad, my though. favorite part actually was when, when the, um, uh, my driver in this past race, he calls me the navigator, I guess, but I just call him my driver, uh, my chauffeur, <laughs> chauffeur. <laughs> I like that. Uh, um, <laughs> anyways, he got mad and, uh, and I saw him drive like, like a wild man and I loved it. <laughs> He yes, was like yes. ramming. Did he get you hyped up or what? Oh, he was ticked and he was ramming people and he was like uh, blowing past people. And uh, um, we were punching dust for like 50 miles on this straightaway wow. that if we Damn. hadn't been in the situation we'd been in, we would have clean air and it would have been, we would have made up a ton of time. Yeah. So he was just pissed. He just wanted to get he through like, it. Just he back was like, to the I work. can't believe this is happening. This, this, this is a miserable section, yeah. right? Just. Just that 40 sucks. miles of straight whoops. Oh, and when you're saying and punching dust, like you're just in someone's dust the yeah, entire time. So, so you can't see anything. You can't see Dude, so in front of you. You can't see to the right or left of you yeah. very well. You basically have these boundaries and you can feel uh, when you're getting off course a little mm -hmm. bit in this particular case. And, uh, um, and you can sense as you're getting closer cause the dust plumes more, but, but your lights are just, you know, like you We're shut off back and forth. Yeah. A bunch of lights you shut off cause at, there comes a point where where it just makes it worse, right? You're well, just, and the scariest part is all of a sudden you're in the dust running and then if there's no dust, then you're like, uh-oh, I'm off track. What's oh, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, Where yeah. are we, we going? We didn't have that happen, but <laughs> man. God. man. You're like, put me back in the dust. Or you're <laughs> right on the ass of the person. Yeah, well, that, yeah, you passed them. Yeah. That was great. And then, uh, you know, you have this push to pass deal. So you're just lighting the people in front of you up because awesome. you basically want them to know that you're coming and you yep. want them to feel like you are right there. Oh, yeah. And get over and let me so buy. So they almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But most of them don't. They don't. 
They no, won't let you buy. No, I mean, they're not feeling it's, it. It's probably pretty tough to be like, oh, pass I'm letting, no. exactly. I'm not letting you buy. Come yeah, on. exactly. I'm not going to be yeah, stuck yeah. in your dust. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to start going like this. <laughs> yeah, make it worse. For and sure. They, no, they probably do. But, uh, but man, we took some people for some rides on that one, and That's it was awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, that was probably one of my favorite parts of, of racing was when we were like slamming people. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cause that's a yeah, yeah. door to door, like race, like racing, racing. Oh yeah. That brings you back to motor days, like the racing, racing. Yeah. That's the tightness that you, as a moto person, you yeah. experience on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm down with it. It's and so you rad, can dude. always, I mean, with off road, even though it's all spaced out over a long period of time, I mean, there's so many things that can happen where you could have five trucks battling together oh, yeah. at any time. Oh, it's insane. And usually that's, you know, when something will happen or someone gets a yep. flat because they're pushing it too hard and they hit that one boulder that they knew was there yep. or something like there's you so start, much that can happen. You make them frantic, you know, stress them out a little bit. It's wild, man. Yeah. Put the we, pressure on. We had this one moment that, uh, where there's this huge cliff, like imagine the, this roof line right here, right? Uh, um, and we're up here and the other person we're trying to beat and the, the Canyon kind of comes into one right here. <laughs> we're up here. He's down here. He's in front of us. Coming into a bottleneck. We could have came over and gotten to the main line. Yeah. Uh, um, but we decided to just see if we so could awesome. jump in front over of him and land in front and of him. <laughs> uh, and basically get in front of him. And, and that's exactly what happened. We didn't lift and, uh, we came off of that cliff <gasps> And just, and it, it must have been the biggest shock for this guy of He's his like, life. He's like, where did this guy just come from? Yeah. And, and I mean, I mean, we were probably five feet in front of him and just like, boom. That's so and sick. And just gone. And he got blown out for sure. He had to slam on his brakes. <clears throat> and uh, um, those moments. Just, yeah, <laughs> those are get you going. Like, I'm like, can, but we, it's do, risk can we pull reward. back and do that again? Yeah. <laughs> it's risk versus reward for sure. Because you don't know. It could end really well or it could end really bad. Yeah, it comes down to like a real like tight, like he could have slammed on the brakes and we could have jumped in behind him. Uh -huh. But then there comes that moment where it's like, I'm either going to land on top of him or I'm going to land in front of him. Exactly. Like, and, and I feel like I've done the math in my head. I enough think we're going to be right. That we're going to be okay <laughs> if I don't lift. Well, you're sitting there in the in the you know, passenger seat, the co-driver seat, sitting there watching this going on. And you, right. you have a choice to either like. Tell him no, 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 or, or go, 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 go. Like, <laughs> he translates it however he wants anyways. He's able to do whatever he wants, yeah. <laughs> I said no, you said go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, well. That's insane, man. I think one of the keys as a, as a co-driver is to look at your uh, driver and go, what can I do to, you know, every driver's unique, and you'd be surprised how, uh, how, all the emotional challenges and whatnot that drivers go through during these races. Uh, and you can start to see when they get mental fatigue or they start to drift or they start to focus. And so it's your job to, I think, read, read your, your, your driver and give them what they need in that moment. And yeah. as well as give That's them huge. the navigational info. But, but largely it's like, I, I use this analogy of the BBs, right? And so, uh, you take a pile of BBs and you put them in a pile right here, right? And then you take one of those cool Hot Wheels trucks you got right there and you park it behind the BBs and that's you. And the BBs represent your attention. Yeah. Going through the race, boom, goofy turn. I dropped some BBs back here because now I've lost a little bit of my forward focus because I'm thinking a little bit about oh, this. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, there's some people coming up behind me. I'm going to drop some BBs back here because I'm thinking about what they're doing. That makes sense. And every time you, you have a, you have a set number of BBs right here. And every time you allow those BBs to sit over here or over here, over here, you're, you're, losing, you're it. losing them from here. So it's my job is to scoop the BBs off of back here or back here, get them back up front where they belong. And it's, it requires a handful of different techniques to do a really good job of that. But the best case that a racer can do is race forward with full focus. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, um, that's sort of the, so, I mean, you can apply short the, example. I mean, you can apply that same analogy, like just towards life. Absolutely. In general, yeah, absolutely. just going through life and losing yeah. focus. Cause you can make some mistakes and it's sometimes hard to shake those things yeah. off and keep moving forward. And that's why everybody mm. needs a solid support system. And I, you know, I've been a, a fan of racing my whole life. I mean, I've always looked at like the co-drivers, like more of just like a navigational tool, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's so huge. I mean, you never really think about that. Cause like, yeah, you're making mistakes. I mean, when you're hyped and pumped and ready to go, you're at your best, but shit, you make a mistake, make a mistake. You really start almost overthinking things yeah, instead of getting back to it. Like, yeah, that's huge. It, it's a big part of it in my opinion. And I think everybody approaches it their own way, of course, but, 
but to me, uh, the BB game is, is intentional and it's just about me applying, like, what's the best that I can do in this position to do the best on behalf of the driver. Cause I'm just there to support him. For sure. Keep yourself you know. safe too. <laughs> You're like, we yeah, don't yeah. want to wreck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, what a trip, man. Yeah. That's so, like- and, but I love that you pointed out that it's, it's applicable in all of life and it really is. And, and for me, it's very much like the approach I take to everything I do, like business, friendships, relationships, you know, all, all of it. It's yeah. It's how can I do that? You know, how can I do that for the people around me? So now when you're not, re- when you're not racing and you're not, you know, helping companies grow, what do you, what's your, what's your passion? Is it still surfing? You go surfing yeah, all the time? I, I wish I could say I surf all the time. I don't, uh, um, I, uh, uh, what do I do? I hang out with my family. I hang out with my wife. I've been married for like 26 years That's awesome. and, uh, we have an incredible relationship and, uh, I have two kids. Uh, they're adults now. Uh, one, my daughter's getting married and, uh, wow. um, which is a whole ordeal that someone at this table's <laughs> going through also yep. apparently. Yep. Uh, um, <laughs> just, <laughs> just clicked our venue, man. Just clicked the venue. It was so rad. Well, we better get our <laughs> invites. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on. We're going to yeah. do the pod, the Lambo and Leroy podcast there while he's getting married. We're going to narrate the whole thing. I'm down. I'm you absolutely do, like, down. You got to do, uh, you got to do golf talk though. Yeah. Golf talk. Yeah, he's walking a mile. Yeah. <laughs> Is he got a trip? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Well, you were just said like, how you had a, you had a wet, you had to plan the engagement party and stuff. I mean, well, we hosted it. My, uh, um, my sister in law planned it, which was great, but. Uh, yeah, so we just had that going down and then, um, you know, you know, trying to be a great dad and I got these two kids that are it, man. still in the house and they're amazing, but I'm trying to kind of like, yeah, see them go. on to their own next stage and every stage of life it comes with that. Also, you know, marriage now with the, ki- with, with the kids on their way towards, well, they're already there, but, yeah. but, uh, they're still in the house, but, but, uh, um, we, you know, my wife and I have had to take this time to re- not had to, but had the opportunity to, and have embraced taking this time to re-engage with what are we without the kids? Uh-huh. Yeah. Cause the kids become very all consuming for a long stage. Yeah. Uh, and we never really let go of that. So that helps. But, uh, um, but yeah, so we've been like, we do a lot of mountain biking together and we got e-bikes and so, fun. uh, that's been super fun. Yeah. And, uh, I ride moto. I love taking my side by side out. I absolutely love driving side by side. Uh, um, and, uh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can't imagine what it'd be like. I mean, my son's 17. Yeah. But I mean, it would be such a different, I mean, you get like, you get thrown into being a parent and it's consumes a lot of your time. It becomes your everything. Right. Yeah. In addition to everything else, like having those talks can be kind of scary, right? Like exciting at the same time, but kind of scary. It's like, it's like a whole other unknown thing you don't even really think about. It's, it's, uh, it's coming for you because <laughs> yeah. 17 is not that far off. How, yeah. how, how old are your younger ones? Uh, I've only got one. You only got the yeah. one. Okay. So he's good. So after that, it's coming for you pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. now. Well, the wife and I'm, you know, we've had talks about, uh, you know, having another, another one. one. <laughs> yeah. Starting over. Okay. Start over. <laughs> I've had a handful of friends that have had the big gaps like that. And, uh, just, uh, yeah, get in shape, man. Worst case scenario will keep me young, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You I young. might feel older, but it'll still it'll keep, keep me young. young. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But hey, maybe you guys can do it at, along the same There we go, perfect, line. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's all, whoa, 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 slow down. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I mean, hey, I'm just trying to get married. Yeah, that's nice stuff, you know? Marriage. I'm pretty pumped watching you fall in love the way you have. It's been fun, man. I know this isn't the sappy love show, but I'm just telling <laughs> you. Know, but I'm ready to hear it. really pumped about it. <laughs> it's been and cool. And you are a dribbling love fool idiot. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it's true, right? I know. Yeah. I know. He's and awesome. it's awesome. I, so in love. It's fucking crazy. Um, it's been fun. It's something that I've wanted my whole life. And yeah. I never thought I would have. Like, cause you really? just, no, man, it's crazy. Like I've always wanted that. But I've always, I think I've always put my time into work and all that too. So it's been tough for me to find someone that is, accepts that and let alone, it's actually finding someone that I've changed my ways for. Yeah. I've found a great medium right now of work-life balance, which is amazing. Mm. And like, I'm super happy with where I'm at right now. I think you had to allow it to happen. I did. No, Mm. I did. I had to allow it to happen. And, And dude, she just, she was the one that let me change my ways to allow it to happen. Were you scared she was going to say no? 
No, I, oh. I knew she would say yes. And, you but, weren't nervous when you asked though at all? Oh, I was nervous. Because no, it's a nerve wracking moment. I wasn't, so nervi- he, I wasn't nervous until moment. legit like an hour or two before. Because yeah. there were so many moving parts to the whole like event that was happening. Like to make sure it actually happened. And she's stubborn. So like trying to get her down to the beach and it was cold and it got windy outside. And she I, she was not going to be happy. I legit had to force her ass down to the beach <laughs> yeah. to do it. Coming I'm like, now. babe, I was like, let's just go down there real quick, take some photos, and then we'll come back up and we'll go get some drinks. And she's like, yeah, no, I don't. And fine, okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And then, uh, and then we actually went and got a couple of drinks before. So I loosened her up a little bit. But as soon as we started walking down there, she's like, it's cold. I'm not going down there. I'm like, let's just go down there real quick and we'll come right back up. <laughs> yeah. And finally, I got her down there. And we had, I had a photographer, I had photographers way on the beach already and the whole deal. But it worked out awesome. And then I double surprised her with a dinner with our whole family afterwards. So it was cool. Well done. It worked out, man. It worked out. So it was fun. Uh, so a, 26 years, any wisdom or advice <laughs> to give uh, give him and myself? <laughs> I mean, my my thought on it is is uh, very key that uh, always build her up, like out loud, build her up because I think it does two things. One, it builds her up, and it gets you in the pattern of seeing the good. And you always have to focus and determine to see the good. And one of the ways you can do it is just by being intentional about like, I'm always going to build you up. I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to do it in front of you. I'm going to do it away from you. I'm going to do it by myself. I'm going to do it I love that. in front of a group of people. I'm going to do it on social. I'm going to do it in my journal or whatever. Yeah. Your diary for you, I'm sure. Right? I know, my diary. Uh, um, <laughs> diary? Yeah. I carry a diary all the time. Oh, only girls have diaries. Shh. <laughs> but I, I think uh, um, I think it's good because it, it sets the baseline and the baseline needs to sit really high. Uh, um, that's great so, advice yeah. actually that is i love yeah. that a lot yep build them up yeah build them up build them up build them up we should, well, all, make a, we should all make a post for our wives right now let's do it <laughs> dude that's all my instagram is now my personal instagram is just it's just chelsea <laughs> i don't post anything else on there anymore but i post everything on my work stuff so it all works out what about you you've been married a while yeah um actually my wife and i so uh this is my second marriage but my wife and i we've been married shoot four five, years four years five years yes, I'm done. Oh, you better get this right. She uh, listens to these. I mean, I know the dates. <laughs> uh, probably four years now. We've been together. I think about six, seven, going on yeah. eight. Yeah, it's awesome. So the advice is always go to Glamis. Yes, I should probably <laughs> take take her. Everywhere she's she going wants to, to go. She's going to agree. I should take your advice. What you just said <laughs> more. Um, I'm usually not one to go out there and post and do that more reserved. But that's actually, I mean, it's huge advice. It's, I mean, I should take that advice for sure. You should take, take, take it. Take it. it. Run Sorry, with it. babe. <laughs> He's changing his ways. He promises. <laughs> well, yeah. Dan, this has been freaking awesome, man. We appreciate it. Um, I don't even know. I don't know. Well, I just want to say to you guys, uh, I think you guys are killing it, and I hope you continue down the same path. I hope you continue to blow the walls open of the kind of people you'll talk to because there's so much gold out there, and, yeah. and I think if you guys do that, you'll find it. You're both amazing in your own way yeah uh, um and together you guys are super super amazing so oh that's <laughs> love right there he's dream, building us up right now uh, he's building show. us up <laughs> we should build each other up oh, now. we should build each other up <laughs> sean no nope. can't yeah. do it write it in your journal <laughs> i'll put it in my diary it's a diary okay <laughs> well, does dude. it have like a little lock on the diary oh yeah, yeah, yeah you have it, dude. come on you got it's a it's like it's all uh, electronic nowadays. Oh, uh, yeah. see, that just doesn't feel authentic. It is. It's authentic. <laughs> <laughs> what we should do? We're gonna add a. We're gonna add a segment to our. Um, oh, I love to this. It, Brian, where he's gonna. Brian's have, diary. He's gonna have to read a page <laughs> yes. out of his diary. <laughs> uh, no. You know? No one knows about my diaries, guys. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're supposed to keep the he's sauce in your the head. Buzz, I know. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I didn't mean to blow you out like that. Jeez, dude. dude. One thought you knew about it. Sorry. <laughs> that was our thing. It's, yeah. <laughs> I keep remembering the safe space. Safe space. Safe space. <sighs> awesome. All right. so, are you going to be co-driving again this year? Uh, probably. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I think there's some, you know, I think it, it's up to it's up to the driver guy what, what he wants to do. Um, so sounds we'll like you got to turn your side by side into a race car and go race. Yeah. I would love to be driving way more than co-driving like that. Yeah. For me, that's where I want to be. Yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, but, thing is, but I do yeah. love the opportunity to, to help people and be part of it's huge. them accomplishing and going after a big goal. And, and I would say last year also just to cap it off, we did really well at the end of the year, we finished sixth in the season for trophy trucks, that's which awesome, uh, which is no laughing matter.
matter. That's massive. Yeah, yeah it's, it's huge. It, you know, the the score trophy, and this is in the score series, the score trophy trucks. You're talking about like some gnarly, gnarly teams, a ton and of Menzies, them, all everyone, battling man. each other, and yep. so uh, to walk away sixth at the end of the year was uh, quite an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, it's a massive accomplishment. Um, yep. What's the rest of the goals for this year, man? Um, get my daughter married off. Uh, when is the wedding? That's the big. <laughs> Big uh, focus right now. When's the wedding? Um, March 18th. Oh, shoot. Soon, soon. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, Damn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. You know, the rest of you do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah we'll figure it out on the other <laughs> yeah, side of that. Exactly. But like, bye. This year See ya. Uh, <laughs> got the contract got showing off. up to her room on the 19th to <laughs> start doing demo, turning into a little man cave. <laughs> uh, I have been dreaming about a man cave lately, man. Hey, do you man. have a man cave? You seem like a guy that would have a rad man I cave. I don't. I wish I did. I don't. I'm I really don't. I, I'm, I'm disappointed I too. Yeah. Like, I really would like a awesome man cave, but then like, I'm just gonna like sit in there by myself. Like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, my friends. like I really this want is a like solo a solo cave. Yeah. Yeah, I, do. I really want like a big garage so I can like work on myself because I have a lot of the stuff at my shop yeah. that I work on. I'd rather be able to like work at my house. Like right now, I have like some of my toys like all buried in the garage. Just like just touch it or look at it when I'm walking in from yeah. work. Like I don't know what my man cave would be like. I don't know. You can figure it out. I, I think it would be kind of like this, only bigger. Be, only big, exactly bigger. Was, yeah. I did see like this one table on Instagram just uh, the other day. It was like, had like king shocks all I did see that the other day. It was pretty and sick. Was, oh, I was like, oh, that would, if I had a mini cave, that's going to be in it for sure. Yeah, that was cool. That <laughs> like, was really cool. Yeah. yeah I would bad. have a bunch of random stuff, I think, in there. Well, two more things. Let's get the freaking show going in with you. Sure. Uh, four, yeah. four episodes a year. Let's do it. Okay. Let's just figure it out. Um, it. That'd be amazing. And then also, uh, tell, tell Michael Corley. That he has to do his goddamn podcast. Oh, you want Corley him, to come onto this show? No, I want him to do his own podcast. Oh, his own. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I told him Studio 23 or, yeah, 23. Yeah. I told him, uh, dude. Actually, <laughs> the interesting thing about Michael, uh, um, I think I think he's stumbled into some, I don't know if stumbled is the right word, but no, he has he's walked gone. into uh, um, a really amazing space by really being like this. Like, yes. There are people that kind of, are like this close handed about no. everything they're doing. And he's been very like this. And because of it, uh, he has walked into a ton of opportunity in a very short amount of time. Dude, and it so might feel fast. like forever for him, but yeah. it has been a no. very short amount of time. It's so fast. And who is and this you guys are talking about? This is a media guy that's in the sort of moto, moto world. world. He's been oh, taking, yeah. taking a lot of photos, uh, a friend of yours. I've known, dude, I've known Mike for 10 years, 15, gotcha. a long time, really long yeah, yeah. time. So like yeah. he's always, he's always been intrigued with the stuff I do. Yeah. Just in the media world. And so legit last year, Ruth, I think it was last year, she bought him a camera for Father's Day. And he's and he loves moto, dude. His, he is a diehard moto dude. And he goes and rides all the time at the tracks. Yeah. So he started going out to the track and just taking photos. And dude, within a year, it's just blowing up, man. It's really cool. He's done a great job by blowing up his picture, but he is just a genuinely good person. Very, very nice. He'll talk to anyone. Yeah. He's legit. Cool. He's a salesman. Like he could sell anything to anyone. He actually does his, his real job. He sells computers to schools. Oh, wow. So that's like his real, you know, 95 job. Is that really changing the world though? No. See, his motto is though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Maybe it changes the world, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, he's a really good dude. So we were talking the other day. I was like, dude, just start, just come and let's record a two or three podcasts in a day. Here and then we'll start you off, get you going. Well, so. I think that's the end game. That should be a consideration of the end game. He should be looking at like you know some of these like whiskey throttle models and swap models, yeah. models and whatnot, and going. You know what? I I could roll out a model within his within 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 his limits. Yep. You know, uh, but that basically provides that kind of content uh, for that community that he's authentic and all about and has and has a lot of really great content for you know, put his perspective out there. And I think that it would get, uh, received very well. I agree. Um, I really do. Podcast an interesting thing. You have to be comfortable basically doing it. Yeah. So he probably need to break, he's a breakthrough do it a few times, that's, but we have a couple of shows we never released cause they were just, they weren't, they weren't there. I mean, it was just yeah. fine. Yeah, and we yeah. just, you know, we, we learned though, as we go, like now it's like every episode we re release, but it took us a little bit of time to... We're still learning, as you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're still figuring yeah. it out as we go. But in fact, you know, we might need someone to manage this thing. We're getting tons yeah, of yeah, yeah. requests, you know. Yep. Blowing Man, up over shit, here. dude. I learned from I the best. I can see all so. the product placement here. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. product placement. <laughs> Apparently, Tomac sponsoring it. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Tomac, Jeremy, Nate. I mean, you got yep. all of them. Yep. Oh, oh, you got some Nate over here? Nate's yep. my boy right there. Dude, I know, man. Uh, um, I think I got that because of you. Jeremy's my boy, too. Yeah, of course. I was... You know, really met Jeremy because of 
you. Well, Jeremy, Jeremy's a rad guy. He's just and, a rad uh, guy. I need to get Jeremy on here. T- talk about an authentic guy that carries the the burden of being, you know, really a voice for an entire sport, dude. Crazy. You know, and yeah. has done it for decades now, even decades past his time as a still. as a uh, as a competitive racer. Yeah, you know, but c- still continues to carry that and do it with class and do it with. Well, uh, he still has like yeah. what, a tech segment on every Supercross, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 If you, I think if you if you were to take it. A year of watching, if you watch Supercross, if you took a Supercross season basically and, and pulled down and said, okay, break it down to how many faces do you see during the course of a year on that TV segment, you would find that you see his face is probably other than maybe the announcers, which they tend to cut to a fair amount. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but his face is probably in the top four or five Insane. to this day of faces. Now, keep in mind, most of these guys are under helmets. You're not seeing their yeah. faces. But of faces that you see and can recognize yep. or uh, I to would this probably, day here, two decades after he's done racing. I, mean, I would yep. go on the line to say that he's probably the number one face that you see Not two singularly decades. by himself. Yeah. Nothing longer than uh, 10 years. It hasn't quite been 20 years. Go on. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, sorry. No, sorry. Yeah, no, but his face is probably the only face that you see by itself. You know, singly, oh, yeah. not with like you know, the announcers because, are yeah. all together. Like it's just him by himself, dem- you know, with the attention all on yep, him. Yep. I would say he's probably the number one most famous motocross or supercross motocross rider in the world. I think that that is correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I mean, people would see him at a store, and like that's Jeremy McGrath. Yeah, and yeah. Whenever we do events, we could have all the top guys come in. The it doesn't matter. Calls we get, oh, is Jeremy, Jeremy going to be there? Yeah, is Jeremy going to be there? Yeah, is Jeremy so going to be there? Insane, dude. But yeah, he's done Jeremy's an amazing job marketing himself, man, after, afterwards. You know what? Um, you hear that and you think like someone's this super intentional about what they're doing. No, they're I don't like, think he oh, is. I'm going to follow all these attrition strategies, right? Or attribution strategies. Yeah. Uh, sorry. And, uh, but that's not, it just has a grace. He has a way about just him. Just the way he is. It's natural. Dude, yeah. he is a it's natu- authentic. It's naturally organic. good person, man. Yeah. It's so rad. Yeah. You guys he's would a- definitely enjoy chatting with him. So yeah, I got to get him make on. That That'd be cool. I love Jeremy. He's fucking we awesome. Should. I could be a stunt double. Yes, you could. Totally. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're done. We're, we're going to end on that note. Uh, thanks, you guys, Thank for you. listening. Um, you know the deal. Subscribe, tell your friends, share it. That's it. See ya. Whoa. Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah. Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. Yeah.